clicking on the icon. And when After Effects opens like this, it opens to a clean slate, an untitled project. I'm going to open up my existing project by going to File, Open Project. I'm going to navigate to my desktop. And on my desktop, I have my course files folder that I made previously. Double click on that. And there's that new project that I made in the previous lesson. Double click on that. It is, in effect, an empty container waiting for me to fill it up with assets and compositions. As is the case with almost any digital media product, there are multiple ways to do the same thing. And that's true for the import process. There's a file method, there's a keyboard shortcut method, and then there's a mouse click method. And the mouse click method is the one that I like the most. I'm going to show you all three. We'll start with the file method. You go to File, Import. Then there are multiple options here. But for the most part, you just select File. Even if you want to bring in multiple files, you just choose File, and that'll work fine. I'm going to click away from that. The keyboard shortcut you might have noticed was Control-I in Windows, Command-I in Mac. I'm going to press Control-I here in my Windows system. That opens up the Import File dialog box. And the keyboard shortcut is fine, but I'm going to show you what I think is the better way. I'll close this down by clicking Cancel. The way that I like to open up the Import File dialog box is by double-clicking in the Project Panel. All you need to do is double-click on any empty space here where there isn't an asset already listed. And in this case, there aren't any assets, so just double-click. That opens up the Import File dialog box. I'm going to back up to my desktop for a moment here and track down the Materials folder, double-click on that, and go to the Assets folder. Here's over here by clicking on this and going to Large Icons. It's different for Mac, but it's similar. And you can see we've got some JPEG files here. We have a video file, a QuickTime video file, an audio file, a WAV file, some Photoshop files, a TIFF file, a PNG file, a wide variety of file types here. We're going to bring in most of these now. Now, if you want to bring in just a single file, all you need to do is select it through large icons. It's different for Mac, but it's similar. And you can see we've got some JPEG. You can see we've got some JPEG files here. We have a video file, a QuickTime video file, an audio file, a WAV file, some Photoshop files, a TIFF file, a PNG file, a wide variety of file types here. We're going to bring in most of these now. Now, if you want to bring in just a single file, all you need to do is select it by clicking on it, and then go on down to here and click on Import. Simple as that. And it brings it into your project panel. It gives you a little preview there. If you click away, the preview goes away. Now I want to go back to the Import File dialog box. It gives you a little preview there. If you click away, the preview... I want to select non-contiguous files, ones that are not touching. So here's, an so here's an audio file. Click on that. And then here's another file I want to bring in now. So audio and an image file. To select non-contiguous ones, I hold down the Control or the Command key. Control on Windows, Command on Mac, and then click the mouse button. And that selects non-contiguous files, ones that aren't touching. I click Import there. I'm going to show you a couple of specialized files, files that have transparency. So I'm going to go back here again, double click again. There are two files here that have transparency. And you can't know that simply by looking at the file name, but these file types generally have here that have transparency. And you can't know that simply by looking at the file name, but these file types these file types generally have transparency. TIFF files and PNG files. They generally have transparency in them, but they don't have to have it. So I'm going to double click on this one here. And it opens up this dialog box. It says interpret footage. Now this is a little bit complicated for folks who haven't worked with transparency before, and so I'm not going to explain all of this because it's really not necessary. But when you have an alpha channel in a file, that means there's some transparency. And how that alpha channel is set up, whether it's called straight or unmatted, or pre-multiplied and matted with color, that's the thing. The differences here are subtle. You need to zoom in really close to the edges to see how this works. So rather than try to figure it out on your own, just ask After Effects to guess. And it determines that this particular file is likely pre-multiplied and matted with color. Again, the differences are subtle and you probably won't even see that. But let After Effects guess for you and then click OK. That has transparency. It doesn't look like transparency there, but if I double click on this, open it up here in the footage panel with this little checkerboard box selected there to see the transparency. You can see it has transparency around the edges there. All right, there is another one that has transparency, but this one does not have a pre-multiplied issue. I'll double click here again. I'm going to get this logo here, which is a PNG file. And it comes in just automatically. No issues about the transparency there. If I double click on that, though, you see it is transparent around the edges there. But no issues about whether it's pre-multiplied or not. So that's the basic process about how you import assets. We'll talk about two specialized file types, Illustrator and Photoshop files, in the next lesson.